Hey guys, how's it going? I'm gonna be going over diabetes today and uh, diabetic emergencies. It's gonna be a quick little video, just an intro, and then it should give you a good foundation for your studies for EMT. So first off, let's go over type one diabetes. So in type one diabetes, what's going on is that your body or your patient's body is not producing enough insulin or maybe no insulin whatsoever. So insulin, when is it created or when is it dispersed out uh, from your pancreas? It's not just continuously made. It doesn't work that way. So we'll pretend that this right here is supposed to be a vessel. Yeah, you can see that. All right, so that's a vessel right there. Well, inside your vessel, you have all these molecules, you have blood, you have hormones going on, right? Well, glucose, uh, it's really sugar. Glucose means sugar, just to keep it simple. Uh, if glucose goes up above 90 milligrams per decimal uh, or deciliter, I think, that's when your pancreas is triggered to produce insulin. So, so insulin is produced in your pancreas. And the whole idea behind this is that by insulin being released out into your, your blood, it's going to bring that glucose level down. All right, so that's really how it works um, in just the simplest terms. But in type one diabetic patients, there's no insulin, right? Or there's very little insulin, so it doesn't really matter if your glucose goes up because nothing's gonna trigger the pancreas from, the pancreas from, from doing its job. So what happens here is that if your pancreas is not producing insulin, glucose is gonna stay in your bloodstream. It's never gonna go in your cells. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. So how does all this work? So first off, what we want is that, let's say that this right here, let's go back to this. It's a big vessel, right? Inside this vessel, you have insulin, this. You have glucose. You have cells, just regular cells by themselves. Um, you have oxygen floating around in your vessels. Um, and then you have fats, or well, fats really are in your cells. But all this is just floating around in your bloodstream. The idea here is that we want to get the glucose, the glucose inside the cell. So this right here represents uh, glucose, G for glucose, oxygen molecule right here. Uh, this big thing right here is supposed to be just a cell by itself, right? It's a, a cell that makes everything in our body. Uh, insulin and that's pretty much everything. So the idea is that we want to get this and this to meet, to glucose and oxygen to meet in the cell to keep you alive. All right, so glucose plus oxygen equals you staying alive. So that's the whole goal behind this. So that's why glucose levels and them going into your cells are so important. Without insulin, that doesn't work. But how does it not work? So what happens here is that we already stated that we want glucose to go in the cell, right? And also O2 to go in the cell. Well, O2 is going to go in the cell. It's just going to make it in the right cell, okay? There's nothing repelling O2 from, not from going into the cell. It's going to make it in there. But glucose doesn't make it into the cell automatically. It needs some help. So that's where insulin comes into play. That's where the hormone insulin helps out. So what... Just to make it real simple, what insulin is, it's like the doorman for glucose. So insulin is going to come here, it's going to open the door and say, hey, kind sir, go ahead and walk in, in there. And then O2 is already in here waiting for glucose. So after insulin opens the door for glucose, it's going to walk in there, it's going to do its thing with O2. Glucose and O2 are going to make little babies. Those babies are called ATP. ATP is life. ATP keeps you going. Okay, so just a little review. Type 1 diabetics, usually they're born with this. They're, they're always gonna be born with it. Type 1 diabetes, this means that your pancreas is not producing any insulin or very little insulin. Why is insulin a big deal? because we want glucose to go into the cell. Without insulin, that's not gonna happen, okay? Because insulin is the doorman for glucose to get in there. 
because for some reason glucose is just so stupid it doesn't know how to open doorknobs by itself that's why it has a special doorknob opener which is insulin to meet O2 to make ATP ATP keeps you going adenosine triphosphate it's energy it keeps you alive that's really what it comes down to we need glucose and O2 to meet in the brain which is really the, what really matters here to keep you going your brain is who you are um, and that is type 1 diabetes pancreas not working not doing this thing when it comes to uh, insulin at least so I'm gonna go ahead and erase all this stuff most of it and then we're gonna get into ketoacidosis diabetic ketoacidosis and you'll see that only with type 1 diabetic patients okay so let me erase all this stuff So Alright, so for ketoacidosis, um, it's going to be your patients that have uh, you know, type 1 diabetes. What happens here is that, let's say that insulin's not in the mix, uh, your patient is not taking it, um, they don't, it's not prescribed to them. Um, so what happens? So if glucose, so this O2 is already in here, is this waiting for glucose to come in or glucose to be made? So what happens is that if glucose is not introduced into the cell, ATP is not being produced. So your body's kind of, kind of, it's going to go into its own little um, backup, I guess. It's like having a backup generator. So what's your cell's backup generator? It's converting fat cells. So it's going to convert fat cells into glucose so it's going to break down fat cells to make glucose well what comes as what comes from that is ketones these prop this property called ketones ketones are acidic and they're sweet so when your patient has ketoacidosis they're and they're, into, they're in diabetic ketoacidosis you get that fruity smell and that's going to break down of fats into glucose so that's where that's coming from. So fats inside the cell are being converted into glucose. So they're just being broken down, made into glucose. And then it's going to kind of produce enough ATP to keep your patient going at least for a little bit, okay? Well, what happens to the glucose out in the bloodstream? You still have glucose in the bloodstream. So your patient's glucose level is going to be ridiculously high. It's going to be really high when, when they have a ketoacidosis because insulin is not there. It's not doing its job. Uh, glucose is not going into there, into your cell, but glucose is being created within the cell. And then you have glucose outside the cell. It's just a big old whole bunch of glucose everywhere. It's a mess. So that's what happens there. Um, you get that sweet smell when patients have are hyperglycemic, so hyper. Hyper, this word means a lot of, it's high, it's up there, that's what this means. So hyper means up, right? So if your patient is hyperglycemic, they're gonna wanna be urinating a lot, they're gonna wanna pee a lot, they're gonna be very thirsty. So think of a patient that's hyperglycemic or that, that's high in sugar, think of them as a cup of sweet tea. So let me get my bottle. Let's say I went to grandma's house. Grandma gave me this big old bottle of sweet tea, right? Well, let's say she put too much sugar in it. This is ridiculously too much sugar. She went crazy. Like, grandma, what are you thinking? You're going crazy. Nah, I'm playing, but um, anyways, what am I gonna wanna do? I'm gonna pour some of that sweet tea out, right? And then I'm gonna pour more water to equalize it because it's way too sweet. So your patient's gonna be peeing a lot and they're gonna be drinking a lot of water just like sweet tea. If it's too sweet, you're gonna pour some out and then you're gonna pour some more water in there to kind of equalize it and make it not so strong, right? It's exactly how your hyperglycemic patient will present. At the same time, they um, may be mentally altered. Type one diabetic, di diabetic patient. Uh, I hope I covered enough so far for this type of patient. Remember, they're not producing any insulin or very, very little insulin. You like sweet tea? Their uh, glucose is going up, up, up because the insulin is not there to open the door for glucose to get in there to make the ATP babies with O2. So it's creating its own 
glucose by breaking down fat cells. I mean, this is like a long-term thing. It's happening progressively over time. So hyperglycemia progresses over time. It takes time to get there, okay? And then because of that breakdown of fats, keto, ke ketones are produced, which are acidic, and they give out that sweet smell. And that's when you get a diabetic ketoacidosis is from that breakdown of fats because glucose is not doing its job. It's not there, right? Or it's just not working properly. All right. Um, that's as fast and easy as I can make type 1 diabetes, diabetes going into ketoacidosis. And that's pretty much, they, they go hand in hand. What does this patient need? They need insulin bad. Because insulin will allow glucose to go in the cell, to meet O2, make their ATP babies, and keep you alive. Alright, so what's next? As far as a uh, type 2 diabetes, this, this happens later on in life usually. Um, and what happens is that you may have enough insulin, but it's just not working. Or uh, so the receptors for insulin, let's say this is the cell, it's just not picking up, it's not really latching on, it's not working, it's not opening the doorknob adequately, or there's not enough insulin to open up the doors to allow for glucose to go in. Uh, that's what happens with type 2 diabetes, and that's over time, usually older adults get that nowadays, maybe some teenagers will get that too, but it does happen. And so we talked about hyperglycemia, a lot of sugar in the body, in the bloodstream, why it's happening, because insulin is not doing its job, or it's not there, right? That's hyperglycemia progresses into ketoacidosis maybe because the, again the glucose is not going to cell so the breakdown of fats is starting to occur producing ketones which are sweet and acidic leading to that sweet breath your patient's gonna pee a lot and they're gonna drink a lot of water because they're like tea right too much sugar is not good for you your body does not want that so it's doing its own thing to kind of equalize your body and I'm not really all there guys sorry I'm not uh, not filling today but Hopefully you get the information anyways. Uh, we kind of went over type 2 also. Um, you were so with type 2, type 2 diabetes, uh, the pancreas maybe is producing insulin, but the receptors are not picking up the glucose, or maybe not enough glucose, I'm sorry, or maybe not, not enough, not enough um, insulin is being produced to open the door. Okay, the doors for glucose to go into the cell. That's what might be happening. So let me see what else I have to go over. As far as uh, hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia, I said hyperglycemia may take some time to build up. Um, hypoglycemia will usually be a fast onset. So what happens with hy hypoglycemia is that um, glucose, usually we get it from eating sweets, right? So we eat sugars. That's glucose. Or what happens also is that when you sweet, when you when you eat carbohydrates, so like bread, pretty much any any food, um, and let me show you. So see this. All right. So when you're eating food, what happens is that um, in your intestines, right here in this area, that the, the nutrients will get extracted in this region, and it will break everything down and make glucose particles to feed your body to create ATP. Uh, glucose is the basic source you need to stay alive. It's the fundamental, it's the foundation for everything. Without glucose, you will not survive. Okay, you can still survive without O2, not as long, because you can still make ATP without O2, but you can't make it without glucose. That's why fats are